All right, here we go. Today's video is about sugar addiction. And the, the question I was asking myself when I was putting this thing together is, why am I doing this video? Why does it bother me so much, you know, for the population that I work with and my clients? And, and, and why do I feel like this concept of sugar addiction is, is acting like such a, a roadblock and an, an impotent? No, that doesn't make sense. That's Viagra. An impediment. An impediment to people's progress as far as losing weight and keeping it off. And I was trying to figure out what, why. Why was it annoying me so much? Because you see it ever. Oh, I'm addicted to sugar. I have a sugar addiction. Blah, blah, blah. And then you see some crap somebody's trying to sell a book or a program or a supplement. And so as I thought about it, I said, first thing I said was, does any people have any idea what addiction actually is? Now, I'm sure there's some loophole that you can worm your way into to consider yourself an addict. But let me let me tell you what my life experience, not a, obviously not as a counselor or a psychologist, I'm not doing this from a, a, a mental health professional standpoint, but I'll tell you why this is important that we address this. Let me tell you my, my experience in my life, not me personally with addictions, but people I have loved and, and known and used to know, read between the lines on that one, you're so addicted to sugar. Have you ever murdered somebody for sugar? Have you ever eaten so much sugar you got behind the wheel of a car and passed out and, I don't know, killed a bunch of innocent people? Have you ever done that? No? Have you ever assaulted someone? Well, while high on Mike and Ike's, have you ever assaulted someone for money to buy sugar? Have you ever assaulted someone because you were in an altered state of mind because of sugar? Again, I know, oh, that's not good. That's an addiction shake. Well, let me, let me, let me again, it's going to get back to this later when we get to the Gray's Anatomy part of this. Have you ever become involved with organized crime because of your addiction to sugar, your drama queen or king or whatever you identify as? Have you ever robbed anybody? So you could buy sugar. Let me give you a specific example. Have you ever been so addicted to sugar but ran out of money because you spent all your money on sugar that you robbed your child or you robbed your niece and nephew? Did you go and take their piggy bank and crack it open? just so? You, and you knew there was only pennies, dimes, and nickels and quarters in there. But you knew there was enough pennies, dimes, quarters, and nickels in there for you to just get one more hit. Because that's what, when you're a real addict, your whole life revolves around just one more sugar packet. you sugar addict. Have you ever done that? Have you ever gone that far to break open a little kid's piggy bank and steal coins just because it was enough for you to get one more packet of sugar? Addict. So I, I understand this is coming across as pontificating and arrogant and angry and holier than thou. But this really friggin' annoys me when people start throwing around the word addiction because they're such victims. Because everyone's a goddamn victim nowadays. Let me continue. Have you ever engaged yourself in prostitution to be able to shore, afford sugar? I've known addicts who have. I've known addicts who have engaged in prostitution with people outside their sexual orientation to be able to afford the drug or get the drug that they want. I don't know if Aaron Owens done that for uh, for uh, for licorice. There was some pun in there. I didn't intend it. Let me ask you a question. Have your Swedish fish ever talked to you? Because I'll tell you what, you can find, you can talk to a couple of alcoholics and they'll tell you the time that their liquor bottle, liquor, liquor bottle started talking to them. It's a very well-known story in the alcoholism community where they finally decided one day they wanted to throw that bottle out in the bottle, literally. They had like some kind of psych, psychotic, uh, uh, what's what I'm looking for? I have these all the time, but they're not psychotic, they're just delusions of grandeur. They had some kind of psychotic uh, 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 delusion. They're delusions of grandeur. They had some kind of psychotic delusion where the bottle was actually talking, it was crying like a baby, telling them, please don't throw me out. Have your Swedish fish ever talked to you, you sugar addicts? No? Then I'm going to seriously doubt 
that you're addicted to sugar. Now, I don't deny there are people out there that fit within some realm of this extreme example. I've actually, through, because I've been in gyms for so long, I've met people who have had type 2 diabetes and will not change their lifestyle. And they get one foot literally amputated due to poor blood flow. But a lot of, there's a lot of vascular issues associated with type 2 diabetes. And they just keep doing what they're doing until the other foot gets amputated off. I've met people like that, 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 that legitimately fit into that kind of criteria of addiction ruining your life. I've met people who weigh 600 pounds and more who can't even get out of bed and their only thought is to get more food. Okay, you got me on that. If that's, if that's who you are, then you probably have a serious addiction to sugar and you need help. But here's the kind of help you need. You don't need help from a guy who wears shorts for a living. You don't need help from a goofy ass YouTube video. You don't need help from some buddy of yours from high school or college who's now selling supplements or diet and exercise programs. You need serious medical, psychological, and psychiatric help, just like the people who fit into this category. But you need, you need surgery, if that's what you and your medical health professional have determined. You need pharmaceuticals. You need whatever intervention it takes to get you out of this living hell right here. You don't need lectures on burn more calories and eat less food, what's eat less and move more. At that point, you don't need that lecture. You are way beyond that lecture. And that's, that's what annoys me, because that truly is a dramatic, sad, terrible situation. All of these are dramatic, sad, terrible situations. And it all reminded me when I hear people, you know, people who've gained 20, 30 pounds, or people who can't fit into their genes anymore, they're like, oh, I'm so addicted to sugar. And it reminded me of this horrific show I saw a couple times called Grey's Anatomy. And I couldn't watch this show more than like a couple episodes because it didn't make me want to puke. Because it was about these, these, these medical interns, I guess they were. And they have these horrific jobs and they're working insane amounts of hours under incredible pressure. There was one scene where like, they're like, hey, who here has feelings? They have no idea what they're doing. And ever raises their hands, right? So tons of hours, no sleep, horrible stress, feelings of incompetency. And what do these characters do? They start banging each other. Well, they start banging patients. Or they start having deep personal relationships with patients who are going to die. So basically what they did is they, they, they saw the house on fire, and they didn't just pour gasoline on it. They poured high-octane gasoline on it. They took a bad situation and made it worse. They made the fire burn hotter longer. Nothing, and I mean nothing. I'm telling you this. I've been a personal trainer since September 6, 1999, and I have never, ever, ever, not even thinking of one exception here, have ever met someone who lost weight and kept it off long term, key word, kept it off long term, by adding more drama to their situation. Drama for long term weight loss is a really, really, really bad idea. Every person I've ever met who's lost weight and kept it off long term has reduced the amount of drama when it comes to their diet and their relationship with food. They've reduced the, they, they become much more calm around food. When you start labeling yourself, because you eat, you eat, we too many candy bars, when you start labeling yourself in this, this, this is, this is beyond drama. I don't even know if it's melodrama, because I don't know what the hell that means, but it's beyond drama. This, when you start going down this road and start calling yourself a sugar addict, you're doing the exact opposite of what at least I've seen over what? What's that now? 22 years of training? Nothing in weight loss gets better with drama. Everything in weight loss gets better when you become much more calm around food. That's it. I wish I had something better to say than that. But that's why what pissed me off so much about it is because... You're, you're, you're going down a road you don't need to go down to that only makes everything worse when it comes to weight loss. I could say it again. Every person I've met who's lost weight and kept it off long term has become more calm around food, not, le not less. So get rid of the drama. Identify your problem for what it really is or is not and understand if you are in this situation, then you need to get more serious help. And that's whatever. You get that point. 
So that's the first two things that really keep me off about the sugar addiction. One is the definition of addiction. It's funny, in the dictionary, it's like addiction, the act or process of being addicted to something. Well, thank you very much for narrowing that down. The third thing is, so number one, you, you probably really don't have a serious addiction. And number two, you're adding more drama to a situation that doesn't require more drama. In fact, it's the poison to making the situation better. The third thing is, you really don't have a problem with sugar. Your problem, I've said this before, is with sugar and fat. Now, in all those years of training, I never met someone, and I'm going to use a word that some people get offended at, and it's not intended to be provocative or angry, but I've never met someone who's ever gotten fat off of soda and Swedish fish. I've never met that person. I've met people who got fat off of ice cream, which is a combination of sugar and fat, pizza and soda, which is a combination of sugar and fat, burgers, fries, and soda, combination of sugar and fat, Alcohol, pizza, and wings, combination of sugar and fat. Donuts, a combination of sugar and fat. You can't solve a problem unless you identify for what it really is. And something very interesting, but the amount of added sugar in the American diet, added sugar, has actually gone down un until recently. Go figure, COVID, yeah. But it's gone down, <laughs> which is not a problem. It's one point, it's like 70% of all emergency room admissions, people would have COVID problems, were like obese. And yet, during this time period, the amount of added sugar has actually gone up. But for the largest part of time, added sugar consumption has gone down while obesity has gone up. And this creates kind of a problem because you've kind of given yourself a boogeyman here, which people, are, people tend to do. They love to have their boogeyman. And you're not even identifying the problem for what it really is. And the problem is, is you over, again, we're not going into this population. This population is way beyond the very simplistic approach I'm about to give you. But if you're not in this population, you need my simplistic approach. You eat too damn much. And it's not even the foods. You can eat whatever the hell you want. There was the Twinkie professor, Mark Howe, who, who ate only foods you get from a convenience store, and he lost weight and improved his cholesterol. Identify the problem for what it is. You eat too much, and you don't move very much. And the biggest driver behind eating too much is not pure sugar. It's foods that contain lots of sugar and fat. I went on the whole diatribe last time on why that's an issue. Why, why, why you don't tend to sort carbs as fat. Because again, most people eat sugar and fat. You're not getting overweight on pure sugar. So this part of the, the, the class is over. Number one, really, you're addicted? Seriously? Go, go, watch, go watch Basketball Diaries, Diaries with Leonardo DiCaprio. Or, or go, go talk to someone you know is an alcoholic, and, and you'll tell me if you're addicted or not. If you really are, get serious help. Stop watching my goddamn videos, because they're ridiculous. They're not the help you need. Don't graze anatomy everything. Drama never makes anything better when it comes to weight loss. In fact, the exact opposite. Less drama makes things better. And understand the problem for what it really is. You're not getting overweight off sugar. You're eating too much sugar and fat. You're eating too much in general, and you're not moving enough. And, and once you start addressing that issue, I don't care if you address it through vegetarianism or veganism or eating only meat or the zone or academic. I don't care. Those are all food preferences that are designed to get you psychologically fired up enough to be in a calorie deficit long term. That's all they are. If you're picking any one of those diet systems that's superior for, every, for everybody, you're just another one of these misidentifiers, things that people want to get no weight over sugar. So that's that part of it. That's why the whole concept of sugar addiction, it literally pisses me off as a trainer because it's, it's taking people down multiple wrong roads. It's taking them down the wrong direction. It's, it's literally taking them backwards with all this friggin' drama. And it's not even identifying the problem for what it really is. So now that, that part is over, I'm going to give it about 15 seconds for anyone with a delicate disposition, anyone who's easily offended, I want you to take 15 seconds and get the hell out of here. Because I'm going to say something that, that, that you don't need to hear. You've already heard everything you need to hear of what I think about sugar addiction as a normal human being. Well, as normal as I get. You don't need to hear what I'm about to say in the next five seconds. So just please, don't pretend you're offended. Walk away. Get out of here. Go watch the news and get offended. Whatever you got to do, leave. You're done. All right. You're out of here. If you're watching this, I'm, just, I'm not even assuming. You have literally engaged in a contract with me that says you are not going to get all upset and offended by, 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 
by what I'm about to write. Okay, so here we go. This is the special adult section. If uh, you don't realize this, comedian Bob Saget died recently. And I know a lot of people think of Bob Saget. He's like, oh, he's the guy from Full House. He's the guy from America's Funny Home Video. Bob Saget was an animal. And I mean that in the most, like, positive way, at least to me. And he, he one time had this line in a movie, which I absolutely love. It was a movie called Half Baked. And David Chappelle is, I, I can't remember the exact thing, but he, he has to go in front of like a, a, an AA kind of meeting, an NA, Nar Narcotics Anonymous Alcohol. I think it's Narcotics Anonymous. And he has to talk about his addiction to marijuana. So he, David Chappelle gets up there and he, he does this thing. He's like, yeah, I'm uh, addicted to marijuana. And this one guy jumps up in the crowd and just starts losing his shit. Starts screaming at him. You're not addicted to marijuana. And Bob Saget, his character, he comes up and he stands up and he looks right at David Chappelle and he goes, he goes, I once sucked dick for coke. That's what he said. I don't want to paraphrase, but basically what he said. He goes, I once sucked a dick for coke. He goes, did you ever suck dick for marijuana? And, and David Chappelle's like, no. He goes, and I think he said this before. I can't remember the exact time. I didn't say it's moving years. He goes, marijuana is not an addiction. Have you ever sucked dick for coke? And that's my question for you. Not have you ever sucked dick for coke, but have you ever sucked a dick for a coke or a Pepsi or a Mountain Dew or a sun-kissed non-diet orange soda? How about ginger ale? Have you ever sucked a dick for that? Right? And this goes back to my original point. Sugar, unless you're in this kind of metaphorical dick-sucking group, sugar's not a goddamn addiction, you assholes. So stop with the drama. Stop with the victimhood. Stop with the self-importance. Understand the shit that real victims go through. The people I've known in my life, people I've known in the past because they're friggin' dead or their lives have been completely destroyed by addiction and knock it off. If you've got that serious a problem, you need to have it addressed. But anything else is just garbage. And it, 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 it pisses me off. Again, this is, this is angry pontificating shank, but whatever. You agreed to this when you decided to stay and watch the video. It pisses me off when you, all, when you got these people all profiteering in my field. And, and med they, they call themselves medical doctors. I mean, they're part of the Grey's Anatomy step banging everyone. I don't know. But they're all talking about, oh, you've got sugar addiction. You've got to get over sugar addiction. Here's my book. Here's my lab coat. Here's me standing like this. It pisses me off because they're all, they, they're, this isn't about real addiction. This is about some counselor in some inner city area working with 20 people who are living on the edge every day, trying to make it 60 grand a year, killing themselves, trying to save these people's lives. These are a bunch of profiteers and scum. They're a bunch of scumbags. They're profiteering off of you by convincing people they have addictions without any idea what a hell of a goddamn addiction really is. Now I get the veins popping out of my head because, again, it's getting personal and it's really annoying me. Snickers bars, even if you identify the problem for what it really is, is sugar and fat. Pepperoni pizza is not an addiction for an overwhelming majority of you. Bob Saget's line stands. I, I, I stand to that every day. So knock it off. Identify the problem for what it really is and stop insulting the actual suffering. A great deal of it, by the way, which has huge biological roots that people go through. There are people literally, and I said it before, I'll say it, who are living on the edge every day. Every minute of every day in life is a goddamn battle. How much of a battle is it for you not to bring candy home from the grocery store? How much of a battle is it for you to not go buy ice cream? Or God forbid, buy ice cream but have the smallest size instead of the biggest size. How much of a battle really is that for you? If you've got a serious problem, get some serious help. But you are doing nothing by getting, being, you know what you are? You're an addiction tourist, all right? You're riding the tour bus of addiction. You're like those sleaze bags who go to New York City to go look at graffiti. There's actually tours in New York City, although there probably won't be tours of just be walking down the street the way things are going recently. But they actually tour to look at graffiti in neighborhoods. That's what you are. You, 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 you're an observer, and you're, and you're getting all the good parts, all the drama and all the attention. 
but you don't have to live with that, the actual living hell that those people go through. So that's it. That's even the end of the adult section. Like I said, if you listened to that last couple minutes and you're pissed off, then you should have got your ass out of here when I told you to get your ass out of here. But that's personal to me, and that's why I wanted to make sure I put that section in here. So that's it. The video's all done. I'm going to go have something to eat, and then I'm going to edit. Well, I'm not gonna, I don't edit anything. That's why I had to give the adult section things. I can't edit that out once I said it. Um, and I'm going to have something to eat, and the video's over, and that's it. So thank you very much.